Good evening, I'm Mehdi Hassan. How could this have happened? Almost 20 years ago, on a clear September Tuesday, America asked itself that question after Osama bin Laden's terror group launched a 9-11 attack in which nearly 3,000 people died. The short answer was that the most powerful nation in the world ignored all the warnings and then decided to send its military overseas to fight its enemies, real and perceived, across Afghanistan, Iraq, and the broader Middle East for the next two decades. Meanwhile, the threat at home grew under our noses. It came not from radical Islamists, but from right-wing Americans, goaded on in recent years by the self-serving lies and bigotry of the current president and his enablers. And last week, they achieved what bin Laden couldn't, the attack on the US Capitol, a blow to the core of the American system of government and the violent pitting of citizens against each other. And again, we ignored all the warnings. That's the view of John Miller, the NYPD's top intelligence official, a counterterrorism expert, and his previous career, a reporter, the only American reporter to have ever interviewed bin Laden back in 1999. In an exclusive interview with Today on NBC, he says the intel was there, but it was not heeded. Was this an intelligence failure? It wasn't an intelligence failure. The intelligence was there. The difficulty here is, after seeing so much of that talk for so long, there is a possible tendency to get numb to it and, and a reluctance to believe it could actually come true. Backing up Miller, the Washington Post now reports that dozens of people on an FBI terrorism watch list travel to Washington in advance of the insurrection. As Donald Trump, the inciter in chief, prepares finally, reluctantly, to hand over power to Joe Biden, the threat to American democracy is even starker than in 2001. All you have to do is look at the nation's capital, where some 20,000 National Guard troops are expected to deploy by Inauguration Day. That is, as the New York Times pointed out, roughly three times the total number of American troops deployed in Iraq, Afghanistan, Somalia, and Syria. We've all seen the images of uniformed troops sleeping with their service rifles in the halls of Congress. Now, monuments and the National Mall are closing to visitors. Barricades have been set up. Capitals in all 50 states have been put on alert to expect armed protests. FBI and Homeland Security officials saying today that the homes of federal lawmakers may also be terrorist targets. We're concerned about the potential for violence at multiple protests and rallies planned here in D.C. and at state capitol buildings around the country in the days to come that could bring armed individuals within close proximity to government buildings and officials. We and our partners have already arrested more than 100 individuals for their criminal activities in last week's siege of the Capitol and continue to pursue countless other related investigations. We're looking at individuals who may have an eye towards repeating that same kind of violence that we saw last week. President-elect Biden is cancelling his long-standing plan to arrive in Washington on the Amtrak train that he's used for nearly half a century to travel in from his home in Delaware. Even the loyalty of some of those troops protecting the Capitol and the president-elect is in doubt, leaving the army to vet its own ranks for right-wing radicalism and blind obedience to an outgoing disaster of a president who continues to deny his defeat at the ballot box. And those troops in the Capitol are protecting some lawmakers who themselves sought to throw out the election, some who have defended Donald Trump's role in last week's riots, some who continue to flout security measures, and some who, as we reported last night, may have even assisted in the insurrection in some shape or form. Then there is another faction of Republicans who may have wanted to vote for Trump's impeachment, but failed to do so because they were afraid that their own Republican voters might kill them. New GOP congressman in Michigan, Peter Meyer, Peter Meyer an Iraq veteran and one of 10 Republicans who did vote to impeach, told MSNBC this morning that he and his colleagues have had to take their safety into their own hands. Of colleagues who are now traveling with uh, armed escorts out of the fear for their safety. Many of us are altering our routines, um, uh, working to get body armor, uh, which is a, a reimbursable purchase that we can make. Um, it's sad that we have to get to that point, but 
you know, our expectation is that someone may try to kill us. There is a feeling that there is not control here, and we don't know what's going to happen next. We weren't expecting for the capital to get overrun for the first time in 200 years. Uh, and so in this unprecedented environment with the unprecedented degree of, of, of fear, of, of divisiveness, of hatred, um, we have to account for every scenario. To say America is at a crossroads is the understatement of understatements. There are no cliches, no historical parallels that fully express the danger of the, mo of the moment in which we are living right now. Hopes for a peaceful transition of power have already vanished. How bad, how deep will the damage be from this growing, violent, domestic terror movement backed by some of the people in power right now? Joining me now is Congressman Bill Pascrell, Democrat of New Jersey. Um, Congressman, thank you for coming back on the show. Uh, have a listen to three of your Democratic colleagues, Jason Crow, Pramila Jayapal, and Val Demings, saying what's on a lot of people's minds right now. Have a listen. I do think that uh, the, the rioters, uh, the, the mob, uh, had a knowledge of the Capitol complex and had a level of preparedness that would indicate that, uh, that um, th there may have been uh, you know, I, I do know that members of Congress were giving tours in the days leading up to uh, the insurrection. There's no trust that we don't have people within our own membership of Congress that are not passing this information on, helping to, you know, part of helping to plan and coordinate and execute that attack. In many instances, they knew directly where they are going. And I know men, many members of Congress um, get lost uh, in the Capitol. And so I do believe there was some inside uh, assistance. Uh, Congressman, what do you know about these allegations of inside help from House members to the insurrectionists? Well, well, May, by the way, hello and uh, Happy New Year. We'll get through this. We're going to get through this. Uh, Mikey Sherrill from New Jersey, from Morris County area, uh, put a letter together, which I signed on to. Uh, she wants an examination. She wants a review of those folks who gave the people who are coming to Washington on Wednesday to create havoc. And, and there are uh, people who didn't, were not there to create havoc, but they got caught up into it. Uh, tours of the, of the Capitol. And uh, I think it's worth looking into. I'm not going to make any accusations until I see evidence. Evidence isn't that important. And when you don't have evidence, you should keep your mouth shut. But I, I think that was a very peculiar thing. I saw it with myself. Uh, on uh, Tuesday when I got to the Capitol that week. And I think it needs to be looked into very seriously. Congressman, just to be clear, you say you saw for yourself. There's uh, Representative Mikey Sherrill, who has called for investigations. You've signed on to her call right. for investigations based on what she says she saw. I just want to be clear. Are you saying that you also saw people giving what she called reconnaissance tours? Yes, I did. I don't know what the conversation was. None of my business. But it is my business. If they were part and parcel to this activity, that was absolutely Mehdi. This was planned. It had to be planned. They went by offices that were marked and were able to get to the offices that were unmarked. How did they know that leadership was in those offices? It, they didn't guess it. It could not have been guessed. So we have here, uh, we know who the targets were. We know that there is a lack of trust. We have to work on that. The Biden administration has to work on that. I understand that. But there's no, no cause for violence. This is, this is not acceptable. And people are going to have to understand that when there's no evidence, there's no evidence. And since this was a bipartisan conclusion, Definitely a conclusion that there was nothing that was rigged in those elections. Why do people persist on saying that? Because the president keeps on saying that. And they have followed him. And I've followed this for four years, Matty. You look back into the history here, look to the record. I knew it was coming. I predicted this four years ago. If you don't stop something and nip it in the bud, it only gets worse. It's not going to get better by itself. And you can have all the goodwill you want. Our job, sworn when we get when we take office, 
is to protect the United States and its citizens against foreign and domestic. Terrorism is a major problem in this, in this country. Domestic terrorism. And we refused to look at it head on. And we had a president. We had a president. I'm not calling him a terrorist, but he used terrorism to get his point across. And it's not good for the America. It's not good for my kids. It's not good for your kids. I have to ask, Congressman, who were the who were the Republicans you saw giving these tours the day before that you worry about? I'm not going to get into names. I mean, that will happen if there is some truth to what they were doing. Uh, and if those folks uh, were there to cause havoc the next day, we'll see. Like, the, we, we've arrested over 100 people from last Wednesday. There could be a lot of evidence put forth. We're not kidding around. And the proof of it is we went back to work many that night and finished at 4 o'clock in the morning with the work that we had to do. We did it. We were, we were destined to do it, and we were committed to do it. And we're ready. We are ready. Now, a lot of folks are not going to go to the inauguration. A lot of folks have not been invited. That's sad. What they've done to Joe Biden in insulting him, here is a man of integrity, not a perfect man. Find me one. But the point of the matter is, if Joe Biden can't do it, I believe me, believe me, Nobody can do it. He put out an economic plan later on this afternoon. I thought it was outstanding. Gives us a good step up on what we need. We need resounding input into the economy. Economists, conservative and Democrat, agree on that point. And you're not going to get ahead. You're not going to move the environment. Excuse me. You're not going to move the economy unless you show strength in moving the virus. You got to get ahead of the virus, or else we're never, ever going to really affect yeah. it, which is now becoming a weak economy. We can do this. Many, we can do this. You mentioned the, you mentioned the inauguration, Congressman. Mike Pence yes, today sir. met the lowest of low bars when he said this. Have a listen. We're going to ensure that we have a safe inauguration, uh, that President-elect Joe Biden, Vice President-elect Kamala Harris uh, are sworn in as the new president and vice president of the United States. Some might say too little, too late from Pence. Uh, he's going to be at the inauguration, unlike Trump. Should he be welcome there, given he's part of an administration that just got impeached twice and aided and abetted Absolutely. an attack on the Capitol? Absolutely, you should be welcome. I definitely believe that. And here is a different human being. I mean, his hands aren't clean either. He was there for four years and simply decided to look away and be a typical sycophant. But we always felt that, that Pence, who served in the Congress, by the way, knew basically the ins and outs, which is an advantage. And, and that's what we need on the scene. Many people are experienced, know what they're doing, and are going to try to help this country because we are in tough shape right now. That is no exaggeration. The federal federal folks who take care of us every day, they're worried about this. And when they're worried, I think we've got to do something about that ourselves. We have each of us a responsibility, and I'm trying to preach to the choir here, but we have each of us responsibility to do something to make things better. And people say, well, why did you vote for impeachment? Because I thought it would make it better in the long run. People have to know that they're not going to get away with these things. That if they do it, don't worry, it'll fade into the night. That's not how you make a new society. And right now, our, cultural is, our culture is being attacked. Our, our democratic principles are being attacked. And we need to stand together. We need to find out why certain Republicans don't trust Democrats and Democrats don't trust Republicans. And we got to work on it. And we have to work on it. We've done this before. We cannot accept this extremism, which yep. has really forced, you saw what it forced last Wednesday, 
When I came back to the Capitol yesterday, Manny, yeah. I looked out the window of my office and I saw the barracks that the soldiers on campus are living. And I said to myself, is this real? It's not a movie. So we got to get used to that kind yeah, of thing. It's crazy. Crazy times. Very crazy. No, very crazy. You're right. We, we, we shouldn't get used to it. Congressman Bill Pascrell, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much for your time. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.